Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, what a wonderful way to start our time, just hearing those words sung out. Uh, it's wonderful to be here with you this morning for our service of worship and of prayer and of reflection. Abby's going to be bringing our reflection a little bit later on. Got a few announcements uh, that we're going to give to you this morning. Uh, first of all, just to say something about the Alpha course that we're running at the moment. And... Um, the Alpha course here is uh, it's not here, it's via Zoom. We had a great start uh, this week on Monday. I mean, it was fantastic. 
But if you want to be part of it, message us uh, by the Facebook page using Messenger. And I'm sure we could give you a link to be part. Missing one week is not going to make a difference. Um, so just be part of it. It's been, it's been a wonderful time we had together. We loved every moment of it. Number two is an incredible thing we're starting tomorrow with Ascension Day, which is Thy Kingdom Come. And we're going to be putting a load of things on our Facebook wall tomorrow and also on our website about resources you can use. But the most important thing to know is the focus is, is praying for five people that you know who you just would love to come to know Jesus and come to faith and just think about those five and and pray for them every day during this season between for the Church of England between Ascension and Pentecost and finally last but not least actually tomorrow open heaven the app for open heaven comes uh, becomes available and um, uh, if you've not heard, it's ba- basically about prayer walking the c- entire city of Coventry. Perhaps during those nice walks you can have at this time, because you're needing to have a little bit of um, uh, maybe social distance walk, but you can have a, a refreshing time of relaxation doing that. But actually to pray for the very road you're walking down. And if you can't do that, to actually virtually pray, as it were. Though, although you're not there, you pray for the people of the street. And this app will become available, and this app will allow us to try uh, which roads have actually been um, uh, and streets have actually been prayed for. I mean, it's a really exciting initiative that all the con- all the all the um, churches in uh, across the city are, are involved with. So, fantastic thing to be inv- involved with. So, there are my three notices, and of course, the service, as you know, is eleven o'clock on Sunday. So, let's start. With these words, O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom, In the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in the new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. There's a verse I want to bring to you this morning that is echoed in the in the song we're going to sing and, and also relates to something I think Abby's going to share with us a little bit later. It's 1 John 4. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. It's a wonderful thing to remember at this time. And it carries on. It goes on. It says this. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. And we're going to sing for you now uh, a newish song called This Is Love. Please join in as you are able.
Take your glory down for me, majesty, majesty. You laid your glory down for me, majesty, majesty. And how I love you, Jesus, you have won my heart, it's in love, oh, it's in love, let's sing thank you again, thank you, thank you, thank you for the cross, and how feeling know that you are loved know that you are loved with an unending beautiful rich and deep love for you whatever you're feeling right now wherever your situation is maybe you've got lockdown fatigue know that you are loved receive that love right now into your hearts in the precious name of Jesus Amen Amen So, uh, thank you. Our reading for today is from Luke 7, um, 1 to 10. I'm just going to double check that is correct because I remember last time I, uh, I frightened my curate by giving completely the wrong passage. But I'm sure that is, that is right today. And it's, it's Luke 7. When Jesus had finished saying all this to the people who were listening, he entered Capernaum. And there a centurion servant, whom his master valued highly, was ill and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and said some, sent some elders of the Jews to him, asking, asking him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him, This man deserves to have you do this, because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. So Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent his friends to say to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. And I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him. And turned to the crowd following him. He said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. Then the man who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
I'm going to pass you over to, to Abby now. Morning. Let's pray, shall we? Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you that it lives and it breathes and that you speak to us through it. And we just pray that you would speak to us now through these words, into our hearts, into our minds, into our lives. In your precious name we pray. Amen. So um, when we hear this story, and it happens in Matthew's Gospel and in Luke's Gospel, um, we generally hear it as, as a tale which we can receive with a smile. You know, the servant is healed, he's brought back from the rink of death, a centurion gets to have his one of his most valued servants back, and the Jewish elders in Capernaum get to see a centurion that they respect, blessed. It's warm and fuzzy, isn't it? But I do wonder if it has more to say to us than that. Uh, and I wonder if it would challenge us in new ways if we let it. So let's see. First, we have to have a reality check, I think. You know, Rome was an occupying force in Israel at this time. They were most definitely the bad guys, as far as the Jewish people saw it. And yet here is a man who seems to be cutting through all of their preconceived notions of the nature of Roman soldiers. You know, the centurion seems to be an all round good guy. He's the kind of guy that these days we might name a library after or a street might be called after him. You know, the, he had invested financially and emotionally, seemingly, in the area around Capernaum and in the people living there. And this appears to be the justification that the Jewish leaders give to Jesus as to why they should why he should help him. Um, verses four and five. Do you see you know, he loves the nation of Israel? He paid for the construction of a synagogue in Capernaum. And the whole story, doesn't it, backs up this idea of him being just a generally quite a good egg. You know, he cares about the health of his servant. He has significant social status in the town, you know, his leadership role, his, his evident money. And on the face of it, if you read it quickly, Jesus is persuaded by these arguments, isn't he? He starts out with the leaders to help. And the outcome of the story is a wonderful one. The servant was healed. Everybody's happy. But I think we need to be really careful. Because if we aren't careful how we read this account, we can start to believe that it's just being a good egg that would be the reason that God might bless us or work in our lives. Or perhaps even worse, we begin to believe that not being a good egg, not doing the right things, would be a reason why God wouldn't choose to work in our lives, wouldn't choose to bless us. And there's lots of ways that we tell ourselves to, is, aren't there, that somebody deserves God's blessing. You know, we say things like, oh, they're a good person, or oh, they love their city, you know, they love their country. You know, they care for the people around them. Other people like them. You know, they have great standing at work. They're well respected in the community. They get lots of likes on their Facebook or their Instagram feeds. You know, this famous person retweeted them once. You know, their grades are amazing. You know, when other people are off messing about, you know, they're, they're studying hard. They give money to charity. They attend church every week. They deserve the favour of God because dot, 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 dot. And these are all reasons why we might assume someone is, is a good person, why somebody might deserve God to work in their life. There might well be reasons why we say someone is a Christian. But is following Jesus about earning or deserving God's blessing and favour? Did Jesus heal the servant because the centurion deserved it? Does God work in our lives because we deserve it? Paul says in his letter to the Philippians that there are lots of earthly reasons why he might be considered deserving of God's blessing. Yeah, he's accomplished, he's respected, he's well-educated, righteous as far as keeping the law is concerned. And actually, you know, we could tick off all of those things for the centurion in this passage, couldn't we? And yet Paul says, 
all of that is counted as loss for the sake of Christ. None of it makes any difference to how he is saved and blessed by Christ. So I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that the centurion's request was not granted and his servant was not healed because they deserved it by their actions. Because they were good eggs. We know, don't we, that no human has ever earned the favour of God other than Jesus. So it's not about doing things to deserve God's love or blessing. I believe actually what this passage is telling us, that Luke is telling us something about where our hearts should be at. Because ultimately, you know, the top and bottom of it is, isn't it? We all long for the outcome of this story or something like it in our lives, whether we realise it or not, we're desperate for the touch of God in our lives and in the lives of those we love. And as the centurion said in the passage, we need God to say the word and for things to be healed. Perhaps now we feel that more than ever. But we can't make that happen by simply doing the right thing. Our hearts have to be in the right place too. They have to be open, they have to be honest, trusting. It can't matter what the world thinks of us. We can't hide broken or hardened hearts behind good deeds or the right combination of words. Remember, all of that is counted as loss, Paul tells us. What matters is it's where we are with Jesus in our hearts. And then everything else flows from that. What's so striking about this story in Luke's gospel is that the one person who seems to get that (laughs) is precisely the one person who, by the world standards, shouldn't have done, didn't need to. It's the one person who's already in a position of political and economic power, the one person who isn't from a Jewish background, who hasn't grown up surrounded by the commandments that God gave Israel. The centurion is the one who is clear that he can't earn God's blessing that nothing he's achieved on earth gives him the edge over anyone else. He says in verse six that he doesn't deserve to have Jesus come under his roof, but he simply trusts that Jesus can say the word and his servant will be healed. He has faith in the authority that he sees in Jesus. Humility and faith, meekness, and trust. They're not traits that would have been commonly recognised in the Roman army at the time. But that's what he puts out there. Open, honest, trusting faith that Jesus is the way to mending what is broken, to healing what is sick. And it's not because he deserves it any more than anyone else, but because he sees the love in Jesus and that he has the authority to make it happen. This fighting man seems to instinctively know what the Jewish leaders had missed, that it's all about grace. Christ took all our sin on the cross. By rising again, he defeated the powers of sin and darkness and made it possible for us to come back to God, to be blessed by and reconciled with him. Not because we deserve it, but because he loves us. And Jesus was amazed. He says he was amazed by the faith of the centurion. He'd never found such faith in Israel, he said. And the servant was healed because of faith in Jesus and the grace he offers. So let's live our lives in a way that shows others that we're loved by a God of grace. Let's share that love. Let's see the centurion's example, follow his lead, trusting Jesus, placing faith in him, coming to him honestly, telling him what's on our hearts, trusting him for the rest. Not because we or, frankly, anyone else deserves it, but because we know we're loved and he will do what's best for us. So let's... Let's stop, perhaps, trying to work out why people deserve God's blessing or not. And simply ask Jesus to come and work in our hearts, in our homes, in our city, in our world, 
because that way others will see him working and will know that he is the one with authority to heal and to save and to offer us the grace, all of us, that we also sorely need. Amen. Thank you, Obi. That was wonderful. There was lots to think about there. We're going to now take some time out to pray and just pray through some of those things that Abby's been talking about. And um, so we're going to take a time of prayer. Lord, we know that none of us deserve anything. That actually it's all through your grace and your blessing upon us that we receive anything. Lord, help us to come to you in humility with open hands to receive your love this morning. Maybe you just need to feel that renewal of God's love right now in your hearts. Reach out. Sometimes it's a good idea to do that actually physically because somehow when we do something physically, it helps us kind of in our spiritual lives just to open your hands to receive receive the love of God this morning. Receive his grace and his kindness. And as we look at our open hands, let's think about those who we, we know who, who don't know you right now, who don't know anything of what we're talking about here. It's all separate from them. Let's bring those people before God right now. Let's, let's think of those five people on our heart right now. Let's think about who you're placing on our heart to pray for over this season of thy kingdom come. Let's also pray for the Alpha happening each Monday that those who come will know faith or grow in faith. Finally, let's spend some time praying for our community and for each other. Let's pray for our teachers, our local teachers who are head teachers, thinking about opening up over the coming weeks. We're here for Finham and for Steichel. Pray for businesses and individuals who are facing really difficult futures, financial hardships, loss of income and unemployment. And all we bring before you the work of SAFE as well, as they work in our community, as our members of our church work alongside others to bring your care and your love. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick. And lift up all who are brought low, that they may find comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we remember before God those we know who are ill and sick. We pray for John and for Jill's parents, for Jeff, for Gideon, for James, Nick, Gail, Alan. Elizabeth, Angela, Anne, Greg, Jack, Heather, Helen, Lindy, Roger and Tish. And for all those who are mourning the loss of a loved one, we think particularly of the family of 
of Joan Saunders, whose funeral was yesterday, for Mary Court's family and for the Eltons for the loss of Mark. Bring your comfort and your, your peace and your healing. Risen Christ, by the lakeside you renewed your call to your disciples. Help your church to obey your command and draw the nations to the far of your love in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We're now going to say together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, I hope you've had felt this time in church was a helpful time. Oh, I've disappeared. Mm -hmm. I'm back. Uh, and I hope you sense God's presence with us. We've certainly felt that here in this church building. We're going to end with a blessing. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with us wherever he may send us. May he guide us through the wilderness, protect us through the storm. May he bring us home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown us. May he bring us home rejoicing once again into our doors. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let's end by saying the grace to one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Alleluia. We uh, look forward to seeing you on Sunday and uh, also do look out on our Facebook page tomorrow. There'll be a lot of new material on Thy Kingdom Come and, and links to uh, the new app for um, Open Heaven and the, and the prayer walk around Coventry. So uh, do keep your eyes open for that. But uh, it's been great to share this morning with you. Goodbye for now. <laughs>